Hi, my name is Chuck at Inline2, and today we're going to show you how to install this 1964 to 1972 GM A Body Rear Disc Brake Conversion Kit. The DBK 1012 Rear Disc Conversion Kit will contain all factory style components to convert your rear axle drum brakes to disc brakes. For this video, we'll be using the Buick Pontiac and Oldsmobile 10 bolt axle. If your vehicle has a C clip axle, please refer to the written instructions for C clip axle removal. Start by removing the rear drum from the axle. Rotate the axle until one of the three holes aligns with one of the four bolts inside the drum brake. Using a 3 8 inch socket, remove all four lock nuts holding the backing plate onto the axle. Next, pull the axle shaft out from inside the axle housing. If the axle shaft won't slide out, use a dead blow hammer to jar it loose. We also recommend using paper towel or a rag when grabbing the axle because it will have axle grease on it. Finally, pull the backing plate and drum off the axle housing, remove the four 3 8 inch backing plate bolts and gasket, and you have completed the disassembly. For this next part, we'll mount the caliper bracket and do a test fit. We recommend having an extra set of hands to help hold the components into place. Begin by placing the caliper bracket provided in the kit on the back side of the axle flange, followed by the dust shield on the front side of the axle flange. Next, slide the axle shaft through the dust shield and into the axle housing. Make sure to correctly align the axle flange with the dust shield. Secure the axle flange to the axle housing using the four 3 8 inch bolts, lock nuts, and washers. Feed the mounting bolts through the holes and finger tighten the lock nuts. Using a ratchet and a wrench, finish tightening the bolts down. As a side note, some axle housing diameters will not allow for the use of washers. In this case, the lock nut will be sufficient. Now, slide the rotor through the five studs on the axle and secure it down with one to three lug nuts to keep it in place for further assembly. Be sure to mount directional rotors as intended if your kit has the directional type. With the rotor mounted to the axle, install the caliper over the caliper bracket and insert the two pins through the metal slider sleeves. Now, check the relationship of the rotor positioning between the brake pads. Notice the gap between the brake pads? This kit provides an assortment of shims that move the caliper bracket inward to center the caliper over the rotor. Minor modification or grinding may be needed for the brackets and shims to clear the diameter of different axle housings. Once the necessary shim has been positioned between the caliper bracket and the back side of the axle housing, tighten the 3 8 inch bolts back down. Notice how the shim is flush with the caliper bracket. Now, place the caliper back over the caliper bracket. Insert the two pins through the two metal slider sleeves and tighten them using an Allen wrench. With the shim installed, the pads are now equally spaced between the rotor. Test spin the rotor and finish tightening the bracket down. It is normal for the brake pads to contact the rotor. For this next part, we'll be setting up the emergency brake cable. Start by inserting the end of the emergency brake cable through the spring until the spring finger on the cable snaps into the bracket. Do not install the inner cable into the notch lever yet. Next, push the parking brake lever forward and spin the rotor. When the rotor will no longer spin while the parking brake lever is engaged, you can connect the cable to the lever and tighten it. We will now install a flex hose. Start by removing the banjo bolt, sandwich the brake flex hose between the two copper crush washers, and tighten them onto the caliper using a wrench. Next, attach and finger tighten the rear axle lines to the top of the rear hose teeth. Finally, attach the female end of the flex hose to the hard lines on the axle tube. Be sure to secure these lines by welding the brake hose mounting tabs to the axle. This completes the installation process for this GMA body rear disc conversion kit. Now let's take a quick look at a staggered shock configuration. This setup was used on some F and X body cars from 1968 to 1981. 
when one side is staggered, four parts will change. The four parts that change are the backing plate, the caliper bracket, the caliper, and the parking brake cables. Normally, there will be a left and right side backing plate, caliper bracket, and caliper. But when the axle is staggered, you will receive two right side calipers, caliper brackets, and backing plates. In addition to those changes, you will receive a long and short parking brake cable. For the staggered setup, you will mount the right side or passenger side on the back side of the rotor and the left or driver side on the front side of the rotor. When installed, the driver side parking brake cable will face the rear of the vehicle. You will need to angle the cable 180 degrees above or below the axle so that the cable faces towards the front of the vehicle. If you have any questions, visit www.inlinetube.com and click the live chat button in the bottom right corner to speak with an expert. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and like, comment, and share our other videos.